This is the tale of Squirrel Nutkin. This is the tale about a tail. A tail that belonged to a little red squirrel and his name was Nutkin. He had a brother called Twinkleberry and a great many cousins. They lived in a wood at the edge of the lake. In the middle of the lake there is an island covered with trees and nut bushes and amongst these trees stands a hollow oak tree which is the house of an owl who's called Old Brown. One autumn when the nuts were ripe and the leaves on the hazel bushes were golden and green, Nutkin and Twinkleberry and all other little squirrels came out to the wood and down to the edge of the lake. They made little rafts out of twigs and they paddled away over the water to Owl Island to gather nuts. Each squirrel had a little sack and a large a large oat and spread out his tail for a sail. They also took with them an offering of three fat mice as a present for Old Brown and put them down upon his doorstep. Then Twinkleberry and the other little squirrels each made a low bow and said politely, Old Mr Brown, will you favour us with permission to gather nuts upon your island? But Nutkin was excessively impertinent in his manners. He, he bobbed up and down like a little red cherry singing, Riddle me, riddle me. A little wee man in a red, red coat, a staff in his hand and a stone in his throat. If you'll tell me this riddle, I'll give you a groat. Now this riddle is as old as the hills. Mr Brown paid no attention whatever to Nutkin. He shut his eyes obstinately and went to sleep. The squirrels filled their little sacks with nuts and sailed away home in the evening. But next morning they all came back to Owl Island. Twinkleberry and the others brought a fine fat mole and laid it on the stone in front of Old Brown's doorway and said, Mr Brown, will you favour us with your gracious permission to gather some more nuts? But Nutkin, who had no respect, began to dance up and down, tickling old Mr Brown with a nettle and singing, Old Mr B, riddle me he, hurry, hurry within the wall, hurry, hurry without the wall, if you touch Hiri Piri, Hiri Piri will bite you. Mr Brown woke up suddenly and carried them all into his house. He shook the door in Nutkin's face. Presently, a smoke from a wood fire came up from the top of the tree and Nutkin peeped through the keyhole and sang a house full, a hole full. And you cannot gather a ball full. The squirrels searched for nuts all over the island and filled their little sacks, but Nutkin gathered oak apples, yellow and scarlet, and sat upon a beach stump playing marbles and watching the door of old Mr Brown. On the third day, the squirrels got up very early and went fishing. They caught seven fat minnows as a present for old Brown. They paddled over the lake and landed under a crooked chestnut tree on Owl Island. Twinkleberry and six of the little squirrels each carried a fat minnow, but Nutkin, who had no manners, brought no present at all. He ran in front singing, The man in the wilderness said to me, How many strawberries grow in the sea? I answered him, as I thought good, as many red herrings as grow in the wood. But old Mr Brown took no interest in riddles, not even when the answer was provided for him. On the fourth day, the squirrels brought a present of six fat beetles, which were as good as plums in plum pudding. For old Brown, each beetle was wrapped up carefully in a dock leaf, fastened with a pine needle pin. But Nutking sang as rudely as ever. Old Mr B, riddle me knee, flower of England, fruit of Spain, Men together in a shower of rain, put in a bag tied round with a string. If you'll tell me this riddle, 
I'll give you a ring, which was ridiculous of Duncan because he'd not got any ring to give old Bran. The other squirrels hunted up and down the nut bushes, but Nutkin gathered Robin's pin cushions off a briar bush and stuck them full of pine needle pins. On the fifth day, the squirrels brought a present of wild honey. It was so sweet and sticky that they licked their fingers. They put it down on the stone. They'd stolen it out of bumblebees' nests on a pippity top of the hill. But Nutkin skipped up and down singing hum a hum buzz buzz hum a hum buzz as i went over tipple time i met a flock of bunny swine some yellow knacked some yellow backed they were very bonniest swine that they went over tipple time well, Mr. Brown turned his eyes in disgust at the impertinence of Notkin, but he ate up the honey. The squirrels filled their sacks with nuts, but Notkin sat upon a big flat rock and played nine pins with a crab apple and fir tree cones. On the sixth day, which was Saturday, the squirrels came again for the last time. They brought a new laid egg in a little rush basket on the last parting present for old brown but nutkin ran in front laughing and shouting humpty dumpty lies in the beck with a white counterpane round his neck forty dancers and forty weights cannot put humpty dumpty to rights now old mr brown took an interest in eggs he opened one eye and shut it again but still he did not speak Nutkin became more and more important. Um, old Mr. B, old Mr. B, Hickamore, Hickamore, on the king kitchen's door. All the king's horses, all the king's men, couldn't drive Hickamore, Hickamore, off the king's kitchen door. Nutkin danced up and down like a sunbeam, but still old Brown said nothing at all. Nutkin began again. Arthur or Boar has broken his hand. He comes roaring up the land. The King of the Scots, with all his power, cannot turn Arthur of the Bower. Nutkin made a whirring noise to sound like the wind, and he took a runny jump onto the head of Old Brown. Then all at once there was a flutterment and a scufflement and a loud squeak. The other squirrels scuttered away into the bushes. When they came back very cautiously, peeping round the tree, there was old Brown sitting on the doorstep, quite still, with his eyes closed as if nothing had happened. But Nutkin was in his waistcoat pocket. This looks like the end of the story, but it isn't. Old Brown carried Nutkin into his house and held him up by the tail, intending to skin him. But Nutkin pulled so very hard that his tail broke in two and he dashed up the staircase and escaped out of the attic window. And to this day, if you meet knocking up a tree and ask him a riddle, he'll throw sticks at you, stamp his feet, scold and shout, cook, 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 cook. The end. <laughs>